I've had quite a few friends and relatives get hit by the Google email phishing scam, so in this video I'm going to explain how to recover from it. Okay, to get started, go ahead and go to Google. Google.com, then in your uh, icon in the upper right hand corner, go ahead and choose My Account. Then go to Sign In and Security. Then we'll go to Connected Apps and Sites in the left hand column. And right here you'll see Manage Apps. Now this is what we're going to go through. What these are is these are all the websites and uh, applications and other forms of software that have access to your Google account through their API system, which is where the actual Google phishing attack occurred. Uh, now the one entry in here that will at first look suspicious, but it actually is somewhat legit. If you use Google Chrome, you'll see Google Chrome itself in here. And the reason it needs access to your Google account is that that's actually separate from Google. Although Google wrote the app, Google Chrome, it's actually running on your computer, not part of Google's cloud. So it, for it to get into Google, it needs access. So that's legit. Uh, now down below here are all the other apps that have this. As you can see, I've got kids that love to play Angry Birds, so <laughs> they have access to uh, my Google. And specifically, in their case, they have access to some Google Play, and that's a fairly innocent form of access. Uh, essentially, it allows uh, different gaming applications to share rewards and achievements and that kind of stuff. And it's really, if you see access to Google Play, it's probably not a security hazard. But what you want to do go is look at all these things, all the apps in this list, and see, is this legit or not legit? Do I recognize who this is? And if you don't know who they are and they have access to something really critical, you probably want to go ahead and remove them. Um, so here we have uh, more games here. Fallout Shelter, which has access to Google Drive. That's a legit app, but view and manage its own configuration data in your Google Drive. Hmm. Okay, so it's saving my backups in Google Drive. I don't know how comfortable I am with that. I'll have to think about that. Um, so things to look for is if it has access to Google Drive, if it has access to Google Mail or Google Contacts, those are all red flags. Now, that's not to say that they can't have access to those things. Um, let's look at a legit app that has access to Quora. That's a, an online forum uh, that I, act, I actually use. And so it has access to Google Contacts. I accept that. That's a site I work with, and it's a legitimate access. Let's take a look at a few more of these. Um, now the websites that are in this list, like uh, Feedly, it has access to my basic profile information and email address. That's extremely common for websites. And really what those websites are doing is they're just trying to make sure you're not a spammer or a robot. They want to know that you're a real person. So what they'll get access to is strictly basic account info. More often than not, that's perfectly legit. So I'm going to leave most of these that say, simply say that. But for any of these, you can click on the entry and it'll give you more information. Email address, basic profile, that's fine. Um, and so if any of these seem to have more than they should have, just click on the remove button and take it away. Now the big red flag to look for, for this, as far as this last attack is concerned, is anything that looks like it's another part of Google. So if Google Docs is trying to get access to Google, I mean, think about it, that makes no sense. If it's Google, they already have access to Google. And that's how these scammers worked it. They actually created a website that had the word Google Docs in it. And so it made it look like Google is trying to get to Google, which kind of sounds legit, but it isn't. So if you see anything in here other than Google Chrome that says Google Docs or Google Mail, that's a huge red flag. I just remove that thing. It's really none of, those, none of its business. Ultradocs. I don't know who they are, and I haven't used them in a long time. If they are someone I've used on, pur on purpose, I'm going to go ahead and remove that. Worst case, I go back to those websites or those apps, and they say, I've forgotten who you are. Please <laughs> give us access again. And I might do it, I might not. Um, Nyancat has access to Google Plus. 
It is, it just wants my age range and language. That's not uncommon for some of these apps because they're trying to advertise to you. You can decide on a case by case basis whether you're okay with that. I'll let that go. McDonald's, yep, they want my age range and language too. Makes sense. So there you go. Going through this list every once in a while is actually probably a good idea. Who is looking at your data and what kind of access do they have? It's a good thing to review every once in a while. I'll put the links to click on down in the doobly-doo below the video. Like what you see, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.